One of the major benefits of being a software developer is that you get to work remote depending on the company that you work for. So what does a remote day look like in the life of a developer? That's the topic on today's Programming Profit Formula. All right, let me preface this with a simple disclaimer. Every developer has their own routine. Every developer has their own preferred order of doing things and their own order of operations. And quite frankly, I can only speak for myself. But that being said, I can confirm that many of my peers have a very similar day to mine. So first off, my wake up and start time is dependent entirely upon a variety of factors, ranging from when do I want to get up to when do I have to get up? There are definitely days where I want to start early and program a full day and have a very productive day, but quite frankly, there are days where I don't feel as productive. That's just the life of a programmer. You have both sides of the coin. There are, on the other hand, days where I need to get out and force myself out of bed. That doesn't mean I don't want to code or I'm not looking forward to it, but it does mean that I stayed up far too late either watching shows. I just binged watch and thoroughly enjoyed The Witcher. I'm going to have toss a coin to your Witcher stuck in my head for like the next month at least. Playing games, I'll admit it, it was Minecraft. Or whatever else that you're doing. It can be tricky to wake up without caffeine first. Anyway. To start the day, I check into my missed messages, whether it's Slack or email or whatever chat program your company uses. Check into your messages to see what your to-dos are for the day, to see if you have any urgent needs, some emergency breakdowns of the night, major bugs, problems, things like that. Usually those will appear on your top priorities list for that morning. Once I'm done with that, I will update my what I'm going to do for the day. Now, some companies will call this a stand-up, depending on the jargon of where you're working. From there, the day will really depend on the current project or focus or really what my goal is for that day. This week, for example, I spent about 50% of my time researching specifically a framework that we might be using with the company. If we do end up using it, I want to make sure I know exactly what not to do from day one. Last week, on the other hand, I spent about 99% of my time coding, specifically because there was a bug that was a major issue and it was causing crashes throughout the app. As a result, this took priority for the entire week and there was very little else I focused my attention on, despite the fact that I was remote all week. When it comes to lunch, I take lunch when I want to, to be honest with you. Some days I get too lost in thought and forget to take lunch, which, you know, it happens. But most of the time, I'll take lunch when I want to, I'll go inside and eat, take a breather, relax, Today, after lunch, my son really wanted to jump on the trampoline, so we jumped on the trampoline for a while. Power working remote. Regardless, I work around my schedule, and I get done quite a bit. I still finish what I need to do, and I still work at a decent rate. I just work around my schedule. The thing is, my experience here isn't unique. Most developers have this same style of day. Obviously, it'll vary quite a bit depending on what field they're in or what they do specifically, but most of us just take it day by day, and we take it on a schedule that works best for us. It really boils down to the company that you work for. Some require you to keep very strict hours. They have to have check-ins. They'll make you update what you've been working on throughout the day, midway, midpoints and whatnot. Other companies are far more lax and they'll say, look, this is what we want done. Just get it done when you get it done. I'm fortunate enough to work for the latter type of a company where I am not micromanaged. And to be fair, most programming jobs are that way. You won't find a great number of micromanaging job employers because that's just not the norm. Most employees don't thrive when you have an employer that's micromanaging everything you do. And most have learned that at this point. Get to the end of the day, I git commit all my code, throw it up to whatever server we're using, make sure that all my tests pass, which is important by the way. After all that's done, call it a day. That's my normal routine and that's quite frankly what a lot of my coworkers do for their normal routine. The biggest attraction of working remote, at least for me, is that I'm treated like an adult. My company and most software development companies understand that if you treat your employees like adults, they'll behave and produce results. And that's really the best approach. That's really what I expect most people who work in this field to find. That's kind of the norm. Now, if any of that sounded attractive to you or you're not working remote at the job you're currently doing, then software development may be a career path for you. If it's something you've been thinking about looking into or wondering about how long it will take you to get started in that career, luckily for you, my course, The Programming Profit Formula, not only answers those questions, but also guides you from start to finish, from absolutely zero experience to a full career developer in as little as six months, depending on how much time you're able to commit. 
If you're interested in learning more about it, click on the link in the description below to try out an account and see if it's for you. The first 100 people to use the code REMOTE will get $100 off the full price of the course. Thank you.